Hello everyone and welcome back. Today's video is something that I've been wanting to do. The other day I made a little video about Africa's contestant competing at Miss Universe this year. And um, in this video, I thought I would go sort of in the opposite direction and talk about Europe and their contestants. I do feel like Europe is overlooked. They're overlooked at Miss Universe and for good reason. They don't do very well usually. But I do still think that some of these women deserve the spotlight. There are also some of them who are amazing. I do feel like when we talk about Europe not doing very well at um, Miss Universe, it's usually excluding France. She usually does pretty okay. Uh, places like Spain, etc. So let's talk about these women. So let me just list them in terms of first name, age, and the country they're from. First up, we have 21-year-old Data from Albania. Then 19-year-old Ariana from Croatia. 26-year-old Petra from Finland. And then 25 year old Diane from France. Now I know a lot of people love Diane. Um, I do think however that Diane might need to work a little harder to reach the top I would say 10 of Miss Universe this year because just looking all over the world uh, there are a lot of lot of strong contestants this year and Diane might not be able to cut it for top 10 if she doesn't step it up. Of course she is amazing and an absolute standout when it comes to Europe but when it comes to being compared to the South American countries as well as of course Southeast Asian countries which are always... Diane needs to do a little bit more. Then we have 25-year-old Noki from Great Britain, as well as 22-year-old Karina from Greece. Iceland is actually sending an 18-year-old named Graf Milder. And guys, I had to Google how to pronounce this name. This is a monstrosity of a name. Uh, no offense intended, of course. I do feel like anyone outside of probably Iceland, Finland, and Norway, probably outside of the Nor Nordic countries will have probably a seizure trying to pronounce this name if you don't google it first she's 18 years old and guys oh, i am just in awe of places who still uh think that sending an 18 year old to miss universe to compete against literal doctors lawyers and just other accomplished women of 25, 26, 27, and even 21. I, it's just don't send teenagers to Miss Universe anymore. I have no polite way of saying this. I don't feel like teenagers belong at Miss Universe. Then we have 21-year-old Roxana from Kosovo, as well as 21-year-old Maxine from the island of Malta. The Netherlands is being represented by 25-year-old Ona and Norway by 26-year-old Ida. Then we have the 22-year-old Alexandra from Poland as well as the 22-year-old Talma from Portugal. Now I know that Portugal has a bit of a fan base this year. Obviously I'm very excited every time that Europe or a European country has sort of a standout contestant for Miss Universe because they rarely do very very well. I feel like Europe is sort of the underdog at Miss Universe and pageantry in general uh, to be honest. So for them to have a bit of a strong contestant this year is really inspiring. And then we have 22 year old Anna representing Russia, 23 year old Karolina representing Slovakia, 25 year old Alicia representing Spain, 19 year old Alia representing Switzerland, and then lastly 28 year old Victoria representing Ukraine. Now again, I know there are some people sort of you know, grinding on their teeth at the fact that Miss Universe is allowing Russia this year and allowing her despite the fact that Ukraine will also be walking the same stage, staying in the same hotel, doing the same activities, whatever. But I feel like the thing with Miss Universe is that they have made it clear with their participation in Israel that we should 
expect no courtesy from them with regards to conflicts between countries and between peoples and um of course so i was i was expecting them to allow russia in fact i wouldn't even be surprised if the competition was held in moscow this year but then again they're not doing the major faux pas that um unfortunately Miss Grand International has done. If you haven't watched that video of mine, oh my gosh, guys. Miss Grand International, unlike Miss Universe, which is about women empowerment, uh, being beautifully confident and all of that. Uh, Miss Grand International is all about stopping wars, like literal wars and violence all over the world. They have invited not only Russia and not only Ukraine to compete, but they have made the two women roommates. Yes. So at least Miss Universe, at least I hope they won't be doing that. Uh, but you know, I feel like I feel like with Russia and Ukraine being together at Miss Universe, I don't think it will be such a big problem because at the end of the day, they are not making their entire pageant about you know stopping wars. And I feel like at the end of the day, when it comes to the Russian contestants. Um, as well as the Russian contestant at Miss Gran, these women are not involved in the conflict whatsoever and they are not responsible for the decisions that their governments make. I do, however, feel like these pageants, if they are going to have these women both competing, they must do whatever is in their power to make both women comfortable, to keep things, you know, just chill and about the competition not to do things like miss grand which is now putting this major spotlight not only on uh, the russian contestant but on ukraine to be the sort of symbol of you know unity and peace i feel like they should just leave these contestants be to focus on the competition which i'm pretty sure they will so guys, those are the women competing at Miss Universe from Europe this year. I must say my favorites, definitely Portugal and France. Let me know you guys' favorite. I would love to know. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Bye.